This travel guide will guide you through San Gimignano and its white wine. Securing a great deal on Booking.com. A cottage like this at only $13 per day. The famous Fiorentina steak. The notorious Palio di Siena, where James Bond was filmed. Siena, its main points of interest and some tips and tricks. Monterigioni's fort and towers and medieval festivals. Many castles scattered around the countryside used as B&Bs, Castellina and Chianti and its romantic narrow alleys, wine tour at the Chiqui Winery with a professional master sommelier, and what to buy and take back home, food and wine. We rented a car on rentalcarsdiscount.net. You definitely need a car to get around Tuscany. We made a list of things that we really wanted to go and visit, and so based on those, we had to find a place that was near all of them. And we came up with a small little countryside town called Sovicille. The further away you are from the city center, and the cheaper it gets. This is a small countryside town, so it's going to be very cheap. Booking.com allows you also to sort it by price, so you'll have the cheaper ones on the very top. Discard the ones that don't have a good rating, and then whatever suits your price and your needs and the pictures are good, that's going to be your candidate. We rented this one right here, Agriturismo dell'Arnano, and we really recommend it. It's high rated, the staff is amazing, it's in the middle of the wilderness, it's not so far from small little castles, and it's cheap, it's really, really cheap. We paid nothing, 324 euro for three people, for seven nights, 15 euros 50. And it's not even a hostel. To give you an idea, this is the distance between Rome and our stay, and also Siena. 244 kilometers for 3 hours and 5 minutes car drive. Today we are heading to San Gimignano. It's a very small town, uh, well known for its white wine, Vernaccia. San Gimignano is a small walled medieval hill town in the province of Siena, Tuscany. Known as the town of fine towers, San Gimignano is famous for its medieval architecture, unique in the preservation of about a dozen of its tower houses located on a hilltop, forming an unforgettable skyline. The town is also known for its saffron, the golden ham, and its white wine, Vernaccia di San Gimignano, produced from the ancient variety of Vernaccia grape. Within the walls, the well-preserved buildings of both Romanesque and Gothic architecture, with outstanding secular buildings and churches. This town is very, very pretty. And look what I bought. For 17 euro, pure Italian leather. Very nice. <laughs> The historical center of San Gimignano is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Here you must visit at least one tower for pictures and must buy a bottle of Vernaccia. It's mandatory. Here's a pro tip. Below the fortified walls surrounding the town, you'll find a scenic walking path. Few tourists are here and few of them know about it. A good opportunity for beautiful pictures and a lot of silence. The interiors are well done, mainly bricks and wood. The apartment is really cozy. You feel like if you were at home. Amenities were perfect. We didn't have to buy anything. Even olive oil was provided and a full kitchen to cook at home if you felt like it. We were sightseeing all the time, but we did have some Italian aperitivo at home, a swim and some yoga. We met the owner and she absolutely is a super nice lady. She brought her dog over and a bottle of red Chianti. As I mentioned before, this place is perfect because it's close to so many little small castles that you can visit just by walking there. It's a perfect location, I really recommend it. Yeah, 
Piazza del Campo in Siena. Piazza del Campo is the principal public space of the historical center of Siena. It is regarded as one of Europe's greatest medieval squares. It is renowned worldwide for its beauty and architectural integrity. The Palazzo Publico and its Torre del Mangia, as well as various Palazzi Signorili, surround the shell-shaped piazza. At the northwest edge is the Fonte Gaia. The twice-a-year horse race Palio di Siena is held around the edges of the piazza. The best tip is to enjoy delicious gelato in the sun, laying down on the floor. Everybody does it, and it's so relaxing. Being in Italy, you can't miss out this amazing ice cream, gelato, and I have pistachio flavor. Yummy, yummy. And the doggy wants it too. If you don't want to be fancy and you don't want to eat in the restaurant or have aperitivo, you can always take your own food and go sit up here. It's really cool. These balconies are the best spot for viewing the Palio di Siena. It's usually impossible to get a seat, but if you manage, you're going to have a blast. The Palio di Siena is a horse race that is held twice each year, on the 2nd of July and the 16th of August. Ten horses and riders dressed in the appropriate colors representing ten of the 17 city wards known as contrades. A pageant, the Corteo Storico, precedes the race, which attracts visitors and spectators from around the world. The race, in which the jockeys ride bareback, circles the Piazza del Campo. They race three laps around the piazza and usually lasts no more than 90 seconds. It is common for a few of the jockeys to be thrown off their horses. Seldom unmounted horses finish the race. We're enjoying wine just on top of Piazza del Campo. So the way you get here is you just grab a glass of wine or something to eat at one of these takeaway restaurants. And then you ask them if you can go on top and you go up this like kind of a staircase and it leads you to this balcony and the view is really nice and it's really nice to take a break and stay up here. The Palazzo Publico is a palace and city town hall. It's an example of Italian medieval architecture with Gothic influences. We are going up the tower Torre del Mangia. As you can see, it's the main tower of the square of Siena. It's amazing, it's very tall, so let's go up. Construction began in 1297 to serve as the Republic of Siena's government. The Campanile, or bell tower, Torre del Mangia, was built between 1325 and 1344, designed by Filippo Memmi to be taller than the tower in the neighboring rival Florence. After 340 steps, my legs are hurting a bit. At 102 meters, it is the second tallest after Cremona's Torrazzo, 112 meters, and the Asinelli Tower in Bologna, 97 meters. The tower was built to be exactly the same height as the Siena Cathedral, as a sign that the church and the state had equal amounts of power. You gotta come here. It's amazing. Mmm, and you can also taste the pigeon poop. Not bad. This is Il Museo Civico. To enter, we paid 9 euro each. Nearly every major room in the palace contains frescoes. Main frescoes were commissioned to Ambrogio Lorenzetti, Simone Martini, Spinello Aretino. Many of them depict secular subjects instead of religious subjects, a contradiction to regular customs of that era. We talked to locals and they recommended this place, uh, so it should be very good, let's see. And if you want something just lighter, something to nibble on, uh, it's called aperitivo in Italian. You can just cross the street around here and you can have it. Many students come here because it's more affordable. This is the place you can have aperitivo.
Here we enjoyed Chianti red wine with the renowned Papardelle al Tartufo, non-uniform wide long pasta with grated fresh truffle on top, and strongozzi with porcini mushrooms. Truffle is a must in this region, do not leave without tasting it. Go up the 131 step stairway to walk atop the Facciatone. Entrance is included with the Museo dell'Opera ticket. You must try these traditional prolibacies. Tartufo Nero, Bisteca Chianina, local cured meat, cinghiale, and strong character sweets, Panforte di Siena, and Pan Pepato. Big sweet olives, Grana Padano, little pieces, black olives, focaccia, it's called schiacciata. We have the one with the tomato sauce and oregano. I just want to eat so bad and you're taking all these pictures. Would you please stop? Uh? Come visit Tuscany. It's just so worth it. It's so nice. During the conflicts between Siena and Florence in the Middle Ages, the city was strategically placed as a defensive fortification. It was a valuable stronghold that not only defended the Sienese territories, but also overlooked the Via Francigena, main artery for trades and pilgrimage. Today we are in Monte Regioni, which is an old medieval fortress. Let's have a look! We are gonna light a candle now in this beautiful church. Let's get in! adult and you can go up to this wall on the other side and also to the museum. destroy the entrances to the castles so it's very heavy and tough yeah you can see all the vineyards of the Tuscan lands some great yummy wine comes from here from here you can see the church the main square and also potting towers Passing next to Monte Rigioni is the Via Francigena, the common name of an ancient route running from France to Rome, although some think it may start from the English cathedral, city of Canterbury. The route passes through England, France, Switzerland and Italy. In medieval times, it was an important route for trade and pilgrimage. Monte Rigioni is also featured in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, a famous game for PlayStation, Xbox and PC. The game is brilliant and will bind your heart to the place even further, featuring bloody battles between Sinese and Florentines back in the 1200s. Below the town are hidden tunnels close to the public. They connected the inner town to the outer town right after the fortified walls. They were used as an emergency escape path. Monte Rigioni was never conquered, it was only handed over to Florence hundreds of years later because of a betrayal. 
Like most towns and cities in central Italy, there are medieval festivals during summer with authentic historical reenactments. Monte Rigioni's festivals in July, from the 5th to the 8th and from the 13th to the 15th. We're in uh, my favorite restaurant. It's called La Speranza. It's uh, near Siena. More precisely, it's really close to Monte Rigioni. And this place is very, very convenient because it's very cheap. You can find on the menu prices that go from 6 to 10 euros for first courses. If you get a steak that's one kilo, uh, you're going to be spending like 40 euros, which is really, really cheap. He dows the steak with it. Look at this. It has to be medium rare. You're not supposed to have this well done. The olive oil is so delicious. Wash it down with really delicious red wine. Bisteca Fiorentina is a T-bone steak of Chianina cattle. The steak is grilled over a wood fire seasoned with salt, black pepper, and olive oil, applied immediately after the meat is taken off the heat. Thickly cut, about three fingers, and very large, often is shared between two or more people. Traditionally served very rare, garnished with lemon wedges, accompanied by red wine. We spend 98 euros and 50 cents. If you go to Florence and you ask for just one Bisteca Fiorentina, per kilo you'll end up spending like 80 euros. La Speranza. There you go, guys. and we said, oh, we gotta come here. Oh my God, it's beautiful. We have this castle, which is a compound. We just asked uh, if we could go up to the tower and they said, yeah, sure, we're a bed and breakfast, check it out. So this is one of the rooms. If you go to Tuscany, you'll find castles scattered all over the place, just like these ones. This one is a bed and breakfast, La Torre della Signoria. Walking distance is another castle called Castello della Chiocciola, named after its spiral staircase. gentleman and now he is showing us the way where we can find homemade cheese and we can buy it there. This part of the video recommends to do the following in one day. The two locations we'll be seeing are 17 minutes away from each other, about 12 kilometers distance. This is Castellina in Chianti. Castellina in Chianti is a municipality of 2,800 inhabitants. Located about 15 kilometers northwest of Siena, it is part of the Chianti Hills. The first settlements date from the Etruscan age. In the early 15th century, it became a stronghold, of which today the Rocca remains. The city has remarkable Roman and medieval details. Tunnels surrounding the town have checkpoints with historical information to read. Little boutiques and shops sell delicacies such as olive oil, wine, and porcini mushrooms, others selling local handcrafted leather. Sure. 
Okay, okay. While we were going, we just read this, Cheki. And we were like, Cheki? That's the wine we drink all year long. And we always look if it's on a special. I can't wait to get in there and check their line of production. To recognize this in the shop, it's like a small little uh, golden head of a horse. Now we're gonna go and do a full tour of the area and then we're gonna come here and have a little bit of food, just some nibbles and a tasting of five different wines. We're gonna pay 35 euros each. This is a restaurant area and I'll show you around. What a beautiful experience. All right, let's get down to business here. Wine business! We got a extensive line of uh, wines here. And uh, if you're wondering where they come from, they're all Czechy wines, except for one, this one right here. I'll be talking about that in a second, but first I wanted to tell you, why are they on this table? So after the wine tour, you'll have a chance to pass through the wine shop and you may find these wines there. But no problem if you forgot to do that or you don't want to stop, you can go to a supermarket, you can find them there. On this side you have uh, cheap, affordable, but very, very good wines. And on this other side you have flagship wines, which are the uh, sort of uh, premium wines of the Chiki line. This one right here is not Czechy, it's Pirtikaya, and it comes from the Montefalco region. It's the northern part of the region at the south of Tuscany, okay? So you have Tuscany, Umbria, so right in between the two, you have the area where you can find this wine, but no worries, you can find it in the supermarket too. These wines right here range from five to 10 euros, while on this other side, Pirtikaya is around 15 euros, and uh, Brunello di Montalcino is about 45 euros. They can go higher up in case they're like uh, 2010 or an older kind of wine. What can you tell us extra about these wines? Tell me about it. Sure, so here we have very affordable wine as you pointed out before, four red wines and one white one. The white one is called Bernaccia di San Gimignano and is the one I was talking about the, in the video previously. La Mora Marema Toscana, La Mora Moralino di Scansano, Vino Nobile di Montepulciano, I'm so clever, and Sangiovese Toscana. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'd like to point out this one because it's my favorite one and you cannot miss it in the supermarket because it has a label of golden horse and it's usually around 5 euro only and it's yummy. But Trukia, we forgot one thing. What is this over here? Good point. When you go to Tuscany, buying wine is not the only thing you're supposed to do. You're supposed to buy olive oil, which is really, really good and premium. And also these two things displayed on the table. You got sausages right over here and cheese right over here. So these sausages are not pork sausages. They're wild boar sausages. Reason is we have too many wild boars in Umbria and in Tuscany and they get out of control. They damage the harvest and crops. 
So we kill them and we make sausages. And uh, on the other side, we have aged cheese and it's a really good and really tasty, couples well with red wine.